giant dangerous python. Sounds like something out of a horror movie. Snakes are eating Florida. There are thousands of pythons. There could be more than 100,000 literally taking over the Everglades. A python killed a child. It's all over the news. Burmese pythons are taking over South Florida, and the Sunshine State is gripped by fear. Well, maybe not. But it is clear that lots of people want to meet the giant snakes these days. Up till you know, this year, usually it was people would ask, well, where they could drive to go see wild alligators. So, so this is uh, something new, uh, having tourists actually come over here and are uh, more interested in uh, an exotic species that, that it's not even native of here. Bob Freer is one of Florida's most successful python hunters, and he also does an animal show at Everglades Alligator Farm. It turns out that if you really want to see a python, your best bet is to come to an adventure park like this, because you'll probably never see one in the wild. And the good news is it's not venomous, okay? They're hard to spot, much harder than alligators, and much less likely to attack. Now we're going to go ahead and put this snake right on your shoulders. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> but that hasn't stopped the snakes from attaining a killer image and celebrity status. Uh, Japanese snow macaque. Bob also runs a wildlife refuge in Florida City, where he rescues abandoned exotic pets, from monkeys to lions to camels to this lemur whose former owner had its teeth removed so he couldn't bite her. He actually uh, curls up and hugs that rabbit at night. And of course, there are the snakes. People had them as pets. They bought them at 24 inches and they were cute little animals. At some point they got too big to handle. So it seemed natural to them to take it to the vast expanse of Everglades and let them loose. And it's only because they had never been told that's not a good idea. And it turned out not to be a good idea. Congress is considering a ban on buying and selling pythons. In the meantime, Florida has started licensing hunters like Bob to go out and find the snakes on I'll state be, lands. Uh departing uh, into the southern glades. Turns out it's a lot harder than you'd expect. Yeah, this, this is a perfect environment for them. I mean, the weather's perfect, the habitat's perfect, and the food source, uh, unlimited food source here in the Everglades for them. Bob's strategy is to look for rats. Uh, there was a fish farm here up to maybe about uh, six months ago. With the fish farm, uh, you had a lot of fish food, and with the fish food, you had rats. And with the rats, uh, we had pythons in the area. This area of Florida's frontier is a dumping ground, littered with unwanted creatures and places, like this former boot camp for troubled teens. Yeah, it's amazing how many things they start up in the glades and then just yeah. abandon it. This be a nice compound for my tigers. It's big, it's fenced in. Then there's this, a rocket test site from the 1960s. And there's a missile in there. There's a missile. Since the recession started, a variety of abandoned animals have turned up in the Everglades, like horses that are expensive to care for, and lots of dogs. I have rangers coming into headquarters here, probably on a weekly basis, that they found a, a, a group of puppies trying to find homes for them. Pythons stand out among the abandoned pets because they reproduce quickly, with up to 70 eggs at a time and they're on top of the food chain. Hunters like Bob are supposed to check the stomachs of pythons to see what they've eaten. The real threat is, is we now have a snake that, that surprisingly is on the ground eating the rats, the rabbits, the raccoons, bobcats. A couple months ago we found a deer in its belly. And alligators, uh, amazing. If it's eating an alligator, no reason you can't expect it to eat our endangered species crocodile. There are other invasive animals and plants that pose a greater threat to the natural habitat, but they don't attract the same kind of attention as pythons. Still, nature may be the best solution. A cold winter in Florida seems to have cut down on the python problem. I don't even know if you could guess how many pythons uh, was killed by the freeze, but we do know that uh, the National Park had 10 with transmitters on, and out of the 10, uh, nine died. Yet the snakes continued to steal the scene not the native wildlife that brought people like Bob to Florida in the first place. Eventually this is going to die off. People are going to realize that, th that this isn't a big news thing. Yes, the pythons are there and they've been there for years. So why is it so exciting now? Uh, 
So this is going to wear out eventually and uh, things will go back to normal and people will be asking me about uh, alligators again. That'll make you happy. And that'll make me happy. <laughs>